This is a kelp forest. Evidence of these giant canopies of seaweed has been traced back 32 million years, when they were likely a resource for the evolution of marine animals. Today, kelp forests are not only a home to thousands of marine species around the world, they also reduce coastal erosion, absorb carbon dioxide, and contribute to the global economy. But as ocean temperatures rise and human development continues to encroach on ocean systems, many of these kelp forests have begun to recede and disappear. If we don't act soon, they may be gone before we fully understand their benefits. Kelp is a fast-growing type of seaweed that can sometimes grow two feet in a single day and reach heights of 175 feet. Some kelp forest residents include sharks, seals, some species of ray, and other fish that lay their eggs among the kelp. Kelp forests cover around six to seven million square kilometers of ocean, an area greater than the Amazon rainforest, and the economic benefits of kelp are estimated at more than half a trillion dollars globally. While the Amazon is branded as the lungs of the earth for its extensive oxygen production, it's actually marine algae, including kelp, that produce around 75% of atmospheric oxygen. The fish and aquatic food that grow there are an increasing part of the protein consumed by humans, especially in the developing world. Some scientists even estimate that seaweed could keep 1.2 billion humans alive in a nuclear winter. Kelp plants are also harvested to make fertilizer or drought protectant for crops, alternative plastics, and even biofuels. And we're just beginning to understand how important kelp is for limiting the effects of climate change. Kelp forests absorb a significant amount of carbon dioxide every year, somewhere between 173 and 268 teragrams, roughly equivalent to the emissions from 5% of the world's cars. In fact, the carbon sequestration from a one square kilometer kelp farm could equal as much as 10% of the emissions avoided by a typical offshore wind farm of the same size. Much of this sequestered carbon is released when the kelp dies, but new growth can replace that, and some of the dead kelp falls to the ocean floor where it's sequestered long term. Clearly, kelp is important, but in recent decades, rising ocean temperatures, overharvesting, and overgrazing have led to the decline of kelp forests around the world. Kelp forests are a balanced ecosystem, and it's important to recognize when things are moving out of balance. For example, around California, sea stars feed on sea urchins who feed on the roots of kelp. The warming ocean has caused sea stars to die off, which led to the number of sea urchins exploding, which led to a significant decline in kelp. The release of raw or undertreated sewage doesn't help either. This chart shows how much kelp forests have grown or declined over the last half century. The average of these observations shows that over the last 50 years, more kelp forests have been in decline than have been growing. And those are just the places we know about. Some scientists think that there are large kelp forests further offshore that have yet to be discovered. These are often far below the sea surface and difficult to identify. One of these undiscovered kelp forests was recently discovered off the coast of southern Mozambique, which hadn't been predicted in computer models programmed to suggest where to look for kelp. Kelp and seaweeds are generally understudied compared to other marine systems, so if we want to stop the decline of kelp forests globally, a lot has to change, and soon. Ending the use of fossil fuels, reducing runoff of sediment and toxins from land, and establishing more marine protected areas are all strategies that have been proposed to conserve kelp forests and stop further decline. Those are all pretty big tasks. So marine biologists, conservation scientists, and environmental groups are increasingly working at less ambitious but more manageable tasks to restore kelp forests. This includes management and protection of other species connected to kelp survival like sea stars and sea otters, and farming and transplanting of kelp. Growing kelp on land and then diving down to plant it can be expensive. So some organizations are introducing novel approaches to reduce costs, like growing kelp on rocks that can just be thrown overboard in a process known as green gravel. About 2% of global kelp forests disappear every year, twice as fast as coral reefs and current restoration efforts just aren't enough to reverse that. Still, interest in kelp is growing, and that's a good sign. But as is the case with many of the planet's natural systems, the race is on to understand the value of kelp before it's gone. <laughs>